Hello, my name is Arthur, and in the last video we were resolving some issues with um, with quotes, chars, and um, highlighting the escape sequences and format specifiers. In this video, we're going to do numbers and and point out the reminder for or maybe the first time a person's hearing it if they're just tuning in that this script that I keep um, using as my test script to load was a first attempt at doing syntax highlighting and I've never gotten that to work quite right so yeah we're getting to the point where where um, I'm going to be able to make an entire page highlight but whether I'm able to do an active search while typing, that's a different matter entirely, and I've never gotten that quite working. So, yeah, we're kind of at the point where... where I've more or less hit the limit of, of what I know, and the reminder, I'm learning C and GDK, by trying to make syntax highlighting. So we'll just close this up. In main, I've created an, one more tag for numbers and it's just a blue color tag. So we've done that a few times already. There's no need to do that in video. Um, I don't recall if we added this previously, but we need C type to do numbers because we have to check digits and alphabet numbers. I think that we might have already used that. I'm not sure. So we'll just write a quick number search and I'm not going to try to make something as smart as this software. This software will know an integer, a float, an invalid number, um, I'm going to make it search for numbers and be able to tell that the number is not part of an identifier. So a number being part of an identifier would be like this. That's part of an identifier. So if it's next to an underscore or an alphabet character, it's not a number. So we'll just write the function, we'll call it number. We'll need some of the very standard things here. So we can just borrow this whole block right here. So we'll copy that. Paste it in. Um, I don't think that we'll need the booleans. Because this is a really straightforward check. We'll change this to number so it loads the right tag. Let's highlight that right. So that's the tag. We'll remove the tag and then we go into a while loop. Inside of the while loop we're going to want to get a char from Let's see, let's just borrow that too. We'll get it from start. So that's just this. So we'll get the char at start. We'll check if the char is a digit. So if is digit, that is a function of C type. So if it isn't a digit, um, 
we'll move the iter forward and we'll check the offset. So we'll want to check the offset to know when to break out of the loop. And then we'll move the iter forward. So let's just tab these back where they belong. And that. So this would be um, stop and start because we're going to move start along. And if that doesn't happen, GDK text iter forward cursor position and start. So that'll get us moving through through the search area and break us out of the while loop when we hit the end of the search area. So if we find a digit, we'll put iter where start is. We'll move iter. We'll start backward. So we'll go backward to cursor position and iter. We'll get the char that's in front of iter. Then we'll check that it is um, that temp is not equal to an underscore, and that temp is not is alpha. which is another C-type function to check if it's an alphabetical character. So if it's neither of those things, we will do a repeat of all of these things. So we'll paste that in there. We'll fix the tabs. So we'll send enter back to the start position. This time we'll move it forward. A cursor position. Get the char that's in front of the digit. And if at this point we don't find an underscore or an alphabetical character, we found a digit. So we would go end equals start to move end into position. We would send end forward one cursor position so that it's so that start and end are surrounding the number. And then we would apply the tag. So that should get us working. So everything looks okay. We'll try to compile that and find the errors quicker that way. Okay, there's no errors. So we'll just run. That's not going to do anything because we have to tell it to do that search. 
So we have to make the function call. So we'll initialize the iters and we will just call number. Which is our function's name. So we'll run that. We'll open our test document. Now at this point, um, there's no two ways about it. Our typing is going to be completely debilitated. So, yeah, we can run and get a coffee while it goes in, does the searches to go along with the typing. So, at this point, we can see typing has become unviable. Um, the searches cannot be performed, especially one like this. That's, I guess, um, well, I'm not really sure. I don't know the inner workings of GDK, but obviously forward search is far more optimized than something like this. And I don't know how to do a forward search just for a number. Because the way that forward search works is we search for a character. We can search for that. But a number is any one of ten characters. So searching for using that to search for any one of the ten characters, I don't know how to do that. Or that that would be... Yeah, I don't know that that's possible. This is the only way I know to search for numbers. It can tell the difference between a number and identifier, but it is pretty slow, right? When it comes to typing. So what we can do to speed that up, the only thing I know to do, is to change our search parameters when we're typing. Now, I figure that, like, when we're doing a search that's related to typing, the search would exist in two places. So let's just take a keyword like void. So that search happened only in the highlighted line. For that to work, um, the search occurred in line 22 and in line 23. That's the only lines the search needed to happen in. Now, as far as I can gather, enter is the only, only key that actually breaks a line. Backspace, it'll join a line, but it's not going to change the nature of, of a, well, it's not going to break a line. Backspace will join a line or delete may join a line but enter will break a line so as near as i can figure when we're um when we're typing there's only two lines that are actually relevant to being searched the one we're typing in and the one above it that we may have just changed by pressing enter so we're going to write a new function initialize line iters And we'll try to narrow our search um, scope when we're typing to happen only in two lines. So we'll need a page number. We're going to need a GDK. Oops, that was wrong. We're going to need a text mark, so GDK text mark, we'll call it mark. We'll initialize mark by GDK text buffer get insert. Insert is the location of the cursor. So that's book, 
at page.buff. So that initializes our mark at the cursor. Now we want to GDK text buffer get iter at mark. So book page buff comma and start the iter and the mark that we're getting the iter at. Okay, so we got a typo there. So that should initialize the start iter where the cursor is at. At this point, we would put stop equals start. So we initialize the stop iter where start is at. Um, if not GDK text enter ends line and stop. So if stop is not already at the end of the line, GDK text enter forward to line end and stop. So, that, so if the iter is not already at the end of the line, move it to the end of the line. Now GDK text iter backward line and start. So now that we've put the stop to the end of the line, we're moving start back one line. So this is our line. We would be moving start to here. Then with start there, it should really just be initializing these things. So that should initialize the iters so that if the cursor was here, when we started typing, stop would end up here, start, end, and iter would end up here, and line would end up here. So that would facilitate um, any of the searches, the problem with um, the line by line searches is now we can't be certain that the difference between stop and line will equal zero. So I think less than or equal to zero needs to be put here. And we also do a line-by-line line search in the single quotes. That's not it. Here it is. So this one we would have to check less than or equal to. So that would mean that line has gone one beyond where stop is. Because that situation can occur now because stop isn't mandatorily the end of the document. So, I think that that should all work. Let's, um, it's not doing anything. It's not going to change anything because we haven't put it into place. But let's get it to compile first. So that we have all of the syntax cleaned up there. Um, did you mean forward to line end. Okay, there's a typo somewhere here. All right, right there. Forward. 
the line end. Okay, that should be close. Okay, so that compiles. Now what we're going to need is to make a new function to call all of these functions. So we'll copy this one. We'll paste it here. We'll call it highlight line. And in all of the places that we're initializing page editors, we'll initialize line editors instead. So I'll just modify this to do what we want it to do. Hopefully I've got everything figured out here. So now we have to take highlight line. We'll copy this. We'll add it into our um, H file so that we can call this function. So we'll save that. We'll save this. And in main C, we'll change our function call here. To highlight line. And we'll save that change. And we'll see if that's working. So hopefully that will successfully narrow the search when we're typing. And yeah, it's good to point out again that I've never successfully gotten highlighting text working entirely. So we can see here that the number is highlighted but the number inside of a name. So the number that's part of an identifier is not highlighting. Let's see if we're locking up. We don't seem to be locking up at all. And we've become responsive. And we can also see here that my manner of number search is not quite what it should be because that's not a number these are not numbers um, these are parts of a name so my number search that needs to be refined more Yeah, it needs to be refined more. It should be looking for digits in a row. It should be looking for a period. And then once it's found digits in a row, a period and any digits after the period um, should be determining that block of numbers is the number then doing the checks. So. Yeah, I'll think about that one and see if I can come up with something to make the number search a little more realistic because it's pretty thin the way that it is. It's not what it should be, but it is a start to to doing a number search. And yeah, the highlight line function, I don't know how good this is going to work when it comes to keyword searches. So we'll glance at that for a second. Let's just open up that test document because it has the keywords in it and also has a routine that searches for keywords. But it's something to consider because this is something I have never got quite working right. So we have the preprocessor keywords to search for. And then we have the um, the types 
and the other keywords that are not types to search for. So yeah, um, when it comes to to typing, um, the idea of even if we're limited to two lines of search, the idea of iterating through these arrays, searching for words, um, well, the way that I know how to do it isn't very functional for for while we're typing. Um, and I'm not really entirely sure how a software would handle that. So that's the part that I run into an issue. I can get an entire page to highlight. That's not a problem. Um, the problem is is being able to do the active search as typing is happening and go, okay, I've typed the word void. And have it highlight as I'm typing, but still be um, efficient and not be making the cursor and typing lag by having to go through all of the keywords. So how to narrow the search or narrow how many keywords it actually considers. Those are things I'm not entirely certain how to do because it's beyond my experience level. But um, we'll move forward so that we can see how to make a whole page highlight. But how well I can keep it able to type and um, actively search, that's at this point forward, it's completely in question as to whether I can I can actually do that within my current um, scope of understanding for programming in C. So that's it for this video. In the next video we'll come back and we'll start looking at at the keywords and what's involved in getting those to highlight for a full page and we'll see how how the two-line search is able to cope with searching through keywords and if that's at all viable, which I'm a little doubtful of. So that'll be in the next video. Until then, I hope that this was helpful and take care.